in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Every time God sends his word, his word comes with power, his word comes with healing, deliverance, and hope. Praise the Lord. This afternoon, the Lord showed me something that it's important we discuss and then we pray about. Every once and again, um, our assignment is not only to prepare sermons, but to be discerning enough to see what God is saying and to understand what he is doing per time. The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar. They had understanding of the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. Praise the Lord. While I was just putting together this that the Lord uh, would have me share tonight um, I got a text message that for me was again a confirmation and um, there's a lot going on in our world and in our society that is important we are alive to it we understand it and then we pray there is a growing trend of frustration please listen very carefully of depression and exhaustion these three words the holy spirit used speaking to me frustration depression and exhaustion to be exhausted and the lord told me that these are spirits that have been sent to the body even at such a time as this to shortchange many people from stepping into the fullness of God's word and God's purposes in their lives, even for this season. And so my, my exhortation tonight as we pray is going to deal with two categories of people. Please listen. Number one, those who are severely under attack in their lives in this season if you belong to this category i have a word for you tonight that there are people there are families there are individuals who it looks like they are in very very trying seasons of their lives where all hell has broken loose over that individual over that family and it's important for you to be guided on the steps to take even to victory number two those who um are not necessarily attacked but they are going through phases in their lives that are nothing unusual as far as greatness and destiny is concerned it's important that we are used by God to help you interpret the happenings in your life so that you are not like them who are void of understanding it is important that believers mature into understanding times seasons and the dealings of the spirit that comes with all of those times. Are we together now? So we're going to deal with these two categories of people. Can you lift your voice in one minute again and ask the Lord for understanding? Father, grant me understanding. Grant me understanding. Grant me understanding.
Hallelujah. Amen. Please pay attention. Those following online, pay attention. If you know someone who belongs to these categories, even if not you, please pay attention for their sake. Hallelujah. There are not many things that can discourage a Christian. Please listen carefully. Um, but the few things that can discourage a Christian when they are there and they remain, the effect of their presence can be disastrous. I have identified two major um, issues, if I would say, that discourage Christians. Number one is on answered prayer. There's almost nothing more frustrating to a believer who genuinely loves God as a tragedy of unanswered prayer, that people lift up their voice to heaven, believing that God is alive, releasing all their faith as much as they know, and then not getting the answer that should be. Number two is an unfruitful Christian life. An unfruitful Christian life. That means that when your life with time is void of certain evidences, that should be testaments of your service, your work to, for God. It's very, very frustrating when a believer gets born again and opens up his heart, serving the Lord, giving his best, and then with time cannot see um, the evidences. There are evidences, testaments that help us and help believers around us to appreciate the hand of God upon our life. So unanswered prayers and then an unfruitful Christian life. Now write this down, please. There is a goal. Let me start with those who are severely being attacked by the gate of hell. There is a goal. There is an object behind every attack of Satan. Listen carefully. That every time hell launches an attack on an individual on a ministry, on a family, on a couple, there is something behind the thinking of the devil and his cohorts. And the Bible did not leave us in the dark as to what Satan is really looking for. And if you do not understand, then you will continually be defeated by all of the, the attacks of Satan. The first goal behind every attack the first thing the devil seeks to achieve is to destroy your confidence in God and the integrity of his word please never forget this that every time the devil attempts to attack a believer he's attempting to attack your confidence in God and the integrity of his word what Satan is really attacking is the integrity of God's word. What Satan is attacking is your confidence in God. The Bible says to cast not away your confidence. Why? Because it has a great recompense of reward. Are we together? Your confidence in God. I don't know if I've shared it here, but I remember I was in Joss for a meeting when I met a gentleman who was talking to me about his dad. And he told me his dad was once a reverend in one of these great denominations around and having been frustrated repeatedly in the field, the man not only turned away from God, he made up his mind that he was going to move to another faith entirely. He was so frustrated, no school fees for his children, no meaning for his life. Nothing seemed to work. And he said, look, I've served this God. I've preached about this God. But I'm going to have to stop lying to myself. It does not work. You will think that you may never get to a point where you can consider this. Let me tell you something. Life has a way of pushing a man, a family, an individual to a point where you will doubt the reality of God. Was it not John the Baptist under pressure who said, go and ask him if he's the Messiah or should we expect another? 
for John to be thinking of another as the person who ordained Jesus, it should tell you what situations and circumstances can do. Are we together? So your confidence in God and the integrity of his word. Number two, the goal of every attack is to introduce the spirit of fear. This subject of fear is very, very, very important. You will be amazed at how many believers have been utterly destroyed because they became the victims of fear. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is a reason why he says that. Fear is terrible. It's a destructive spirit. Every other spirit stands in the line waiting for fear to open the door. No other spirit can open any door that fear does not open. Failure waits for fear to open the door. Death waits for fear to open the door. Discouragement waits for fear. All the spirits line up with the potentials of the havoc they can wreak. But then they wait for fear. A man who conquers fear has conquered many spirits automatically. The Bible says, and to deliver them who through fear, the fear of death now, have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. Praise the Lord. Fear. Believers live in fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear of this and that and that and that. Today you see young people, even teenagers, having high blood pressure. This is something that a teenager should have no business with ordinarily. But fear, fear, fear of the future. How will tomorrow be? How will this happen? How will that happen? And that fear creates a lot of worry. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus took out time to teach and explain again and again on the fruitlessness of worry. He said, which of you by worrying can add even a cubit to his hair? He said, consider the lilies of the valley. Consider the birds of the air. They break a fundamental law of sowing and reaping. Yet your father, your heavenly father, is benevolent enough to make sure they are not hungry. Please listen very carefully. Sooner or later in your Christian experience, hell will be interested in you. I guarantee you, except you do not love the Lord and you do not keep growing. A time will come when the impact that you continue to make will attract the attention of hell. Who is this young man who wants to rise and do what has never been done in this family? For as long as you remain down, that's all right. But then you, you it's, like a, it's like a spiritual thermometer. There is a level when you rise to, you attract the attention of hell. And they say, what is going on here? If we allow this young Moses, he can tomorrow be the deliverer. Do not take the baby for granted. Kill him while he's a baby. Don't allow him grow. The potentials of his growth can be dangerous. And so discouragement comes. Discouragement. So many believers, listen. So many families have had, especially in this time that we live in, their faith shaken, discouraged. Students are discouraged. Workers discouraged. Graduates discouraged, pastors discouraged, church members, you know, it looks like there is this air of discouragement and depression. When you say praise the Lord, people cannot say hallelujah. In their minds, they say for what? Hallelujah comes from the word halal Yeshua. Praise the one who saves. That's what it means. You say, where is the salvation that I should praise him? Talk to an average believer about God. He will prefer you talking about rapture than talking about the faithfulness of God. Don't mention that word faithful to him. Because he tells you, I don't know what you are talking about. That reality is foreign to my experience. I do not yet know God as faithful. Faithful means keeping to your word. Faithful means justifying your integrity at all times. Please listen very carefully. So believers have been attacked here and there. And they think that the attack, listen, they think the attack is just on them 
just because they are Christians or just because the devil does not want them to have a job or have a child and so on and so forth. Listen, the devil is looking more than you. He's, he's trying to use you to make a statement to God that you are not faithful. So when you read scriptures like, since I was young, and now I am old. He says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. And you think of all your family members in light of this. He said, but this is a lie. This is not true. Foreign to my experience. And when the devil wants to make the statement stronger, he will handpick serious believers. He knows the impact. Listen, the discouragement of a serious believer has more impact than that of a believer that is not serious. Someone who is not serious with God, if he tells you things are not working, you tell him, what did you ever engage? I mean, we, we watched you in, in all that laziness, no prayer, no nothing. But when a brother who has been a prayer warrior serving in church, when a sister who has been serving faithfully in church, two years, three years, no child, four years, no child, then she now gets pregnant and everybody begins to rejoice. Then at the fifth or sixth month, she will lose the baby in a way that can cause a problem. Listen carefully. That impact, another believer will now say, my God, what is this? If you don't listen to what I'm telling you, a time will come you will not see the need to continue again. There are many believers who are sitting down but they've left God since. They are just coming to church because they know if you don't see him in church, you say, I didn't see you here yesterday. But the truth is that their hearts are not with God again. They, they are not yet bold enough to go to a harvest, but you can be sure one leg is already coming out of the things of God. And that includes preachers. The frustration of fasting and praying for genuine spiritual power Going around and emptying my accounts in need for impartation only to return back with nothing that shows I was called. When an aspect of your life has results and then another aspect does not have results, you can at least find consolation. Listen, but when every area of your life lacks results, it's a cause for concern. Usually it will not disturb you till other brethren start saying, but why is this so? an attack on your confidence in God. You started your Christian experience loving God. You made bold and audacious statements about God. And while you made that statement, hell kept quiet like they didn't hear you. I will never leave the Lord no matter what happens. I will stand for him. I will stand by him. It doesn't matter. And now five years without a child, and you don't have the courage to make the same statement you made 10 years ago. I will never give anybody bribe to get a job. Remember you said it. And now here is a job that can reward you. Only if you can fish out 150000 You can pay it back in a month. Your integrity is at stake. You made a statement that you will never bribe. But jobs continue to pass you again and again until the day your loved ones look at you and say you are a foolish portrait of a believer. Watching you is a discouragement to me. At first you would think that it did not touch you until you sit later on and say, but God, are you not watching? And then heaven is silent. Are we together? When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. When believers do not get results, they are vulnerable. Please listen to me. When believers consistently do not get results, they are vulnerable. They are put in a position where the, the faithfulness of God seems to be an issue that, they, that is worth debating about. Behind every attack is the desire to challenge your confidence in God. It's your desire to challenge the integrity of God's word. Hallelujah. I got a text this afternoon 
about um, a gentleman who killed himself or so. I, I heard the story that there was a gentleman who killed himself. And if I'm right, I was told that the gentleman's brother or relative also killed himself. Now imagine, please, ladies, imagine that you gave birth to children who killed themselves. Not that they died, not a car accident, not sickness. You left your child hugging your child in the morning and say, make sure I see you in the evening. And then you see people running somewhere and you join them thinking it's someone else's child. And there you see your child and the testimony is that he killed himself. Think of what society will do to you. Think of what other women will say about you. Say this woman must have been wicked. It means that you do all kinds of things. Sometimes it seems like death is better than living. This is why people have the courage to kill themselves. And if you ignore a man that killed himself and don't help other people, very soon an entire area will begin to kill themselves. It's a spirit, but I've taught you how spirits work. They don't come and work with nothing. There is a raw material. They use your frustration as a raw material. They use your depression as a raw material. They create a, they, they create a system around your frustration. And that becomes the entry and the access point to your life. But we have come tonight to call the devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. He says, but I know whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And I am persuaded. Listen to me. It is important. I will continue to teach this here koinonia. It is important the depth of your spiritual foundation. Remember my teaching a few weeks ago? That the deeper and the more solid your foundation, the more unbending you will be in the face of unfavorable situation. There are people who have dug so deep, they have become like Paul. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. What shall separate us from the love of God? And then he begins to list a lot of things. Shall persecution, shall famine, shall A, B, and C. Frustration. And then the spirit of fear. You look around and see fear all over people's eyes. Fear. Financial fear. Marital fear. Fear of children. Fear of raising children. It will be very irresponsible of any preacher and any man of God to ignore these truths, especially in light of the realities that are in our world today. When people begin to hang themselves, when people begin to run away in discouragement, go to the hospitals, go to the psychiatric wards, and see all kinds of people, young people, talking to themselves out of depression and frustration. Something is wrong. There has to be a people who will rise and say, Satan, you are a liar. Jesus is still on the throne and our, conviction, our convictions will not shake, we will not bend. Say, I reject fear. Say it again. Say, I reject fear. One more time, say, I reject fear. Fear is a spirit. Reject it. Open your mouth in one minute. I reject fear. You are a spirit. I may not know everything about tomorrow, but I know the one who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. He holds tomorrow. I reject fear. I reject fear. I reject fear. Fear is a spirit and all spirits are received. Any spirit that is received can be rejected. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of love, the spirit of power, and of a sound mind. Fear of excelling in ministry. Fear of marriage. Fear of children. Fear of the future of children. Fear of finances. How can I tell 
if I will live to see tomorrow, how can I tell if I will not die in a ghastly motor accident tonight? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Please look up. The believer who will never allow his confidence to be shaken and a believer who refuses to receive the spirit of fear, that is the believer that will weary Satan to victory. Literally. That you can weary the devil with your convictions. That regardless of what happens around you, you can stand in faith and say, my confidence, Lord, more than ever, I trust you. More than ever, I love you. More than ever, I will follow you as for me and my house. When a husband loses his job in one day, by the next month, the wife loses her job. By the third month, the child loses admission or something and three of them are seated with a Bible in the midst of them full of many promises. And then they do not know what to do. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. At that time, heaven is watching even as hell is also watching. Those who will not curse God because of their pain. If your pain will make you curse God, you are small. If your pain makes you curse God, you are weak. If your pain makes you curse God, your foundation is not deep enough. Are we together? Job's life kept being manipulated so that he will find offense in God. Even his wife said, look, Mr. Man, this is too bad. Curse God and die. Curse God and die. While I was still preparing this note this afternoon, one of our precious ladies in the worship team just sent me a text and said, they just told me my father has gone to be with the Lord. I'm sure she woke up this morning preparing with her colleagues to celebrate the faithfulness of God tonight, only to receive a report in a year of extraordinary fruitfulness that your father has died. Are we together now? Yes. There is a couple, I don't know if they were able to make it here, but I'll be very impressed if they made it. The devil has attempted to challenge the husband and the wife again and again and again. And that man of God in his resilience, he said something that touched me one time while we were talking. He said, I will never be discouraged and I will never find fault in God. God is faithful. This is the language that moves heaven. That the devil says, can't you curse God? Are you blind? You still maintain your integrity and say God is alive? I got so many text messages from our young ones who wrote jam. Apostle, I've heard you change people's jam. This is what I got. This is what I want to get. Pray. And they send sometimes more than 10 times that text. I believe I will die believing God is a miracle worker. But the question is, what if it does not change? <laughs> You don't like this part of God. What if it does not change? What happens to you when your expectation does not come to pass? What happens when what you saw in your vision does not manifest physically? What happens when God tells you by March you are a millionaire and by March you don't even have a job? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You are eating this bread because the journey is far. Man of God, what happens when you start ministry with a lot of zeal? Assurances from financial partners. Just start, we are here. We believe in your vision. We will stand by you to the end. 
Four months, they say, we've tried. Don't come near us for that rent again. I confess to you, my brothers and my sisters, that life can be very trying. Life can be trying to the point that even Jesus would cry at Gethsemane and say, being in the flesh, I thought it would be easier. But now I've carried the burden of men. And even as the son of God, I confessed that men are trying. Surviving the betrayals and the pain. Surviving the nakedness and the shame. Now alone, praying in Gethsemane. Jesus wept, prayed till his tears became like drops of blood. Is God blessing you today? There is a reason behind the attack that has come, is currently on you, or is on the way coming. Let me tell you this. <laughs> there are many believers who convince themselves that they are not creating any trouble. It's the reason why they never get serious with God because they hope that the devil will be busy attacking the Joshua Selmans who are causing trouble. Don't practice the foolishness of Esther. Mordecai told Esther that this plot is for all of us. It's just broken in faces. Phase one is for those outside the palace, but phase two will catch up with you. For as long as you have named the name of Christ, let me tell you, you have made yourself an arch enemy to Satan, and he will come. I assure you, Jesus is fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He's done fasting and the first personality he meets is Satan. And hear what the Bible says. He departed for a season. For a what? Season. That means I'm coming. I don't mean to scare you, but I'm opening you up to the reality of living. He's coming. It's not only God that is coming. Maranatha is not just for God alone. Satan too is coming. Satan just like faith cometh. Is it not in your Bible? The thief cometh. He doesn't have to be invited. The thief cometh. To every family he will come. To every ministry he will come. To every life. Please hear me. He will come. Oh, apostle, I've been enjoying my life. Everything has been wonderful. Keep going. Keep going. The world is not too large for his presence to reach. Satan is an expert in mobility. He testified his expertise in mobility before God. Where are you coming from? He said, from to and fro the earth. That's not a problem. I can voyage as many times as it will take to meet you. He will come. Let your finances begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your children begin to glorify God. He will come. Insult me today and thank me years later, but you must listen. Let your ministry begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your life begin to glorify God. He will come. Let your home begin to glorify God. He will come. I think it was last week or so, I had the opportunity to counsel a couple. I could not believe when they told me the antecedents of their marriage and the level of, of love and passion and friendliness they had. I could not believe that a couple who were disbonded today would be looking for a divorce. I said, what, what was so bad that you want to go out? Man of God, I've said my own. We didn't come here to debate. It's a conclusion we have made. I said, take it easy. There has to be a way. Hmm. Life, ba. If you don't know God, one day you will sit down on the road and say, before life kills me, let me kill myself. When you see people do foolish things, don't think they were born foolish. Are we together? When people go and buy this rat poison, what they call it? 
and add it to rice and turn it to eat and die. They are not stupid people. There is a way life can push you. Huh? As a lady, when a man has done your traditionals, has done everything, the invitation letter has come out, and then he just looks at you and casually says, I don't feel like doing it again. Because somebody told me you are a witch. Go and tell your father they can go with the dowry. I'm gone. At that point, you would think you would smile and say, oh, no problem. What is there? God told you to live my life. You, you will cry and not know what direction to turn to. It is true that life can push you. It is true that life can challenge you. Recently, I had a conversation with a man that broke me. I was going to pray for the man. True story. And the man looked at me and said, Apostle, let me finish the story. He said, as I'm talking to you right now, my beloved wife is in the mortuary. I don't even have the money to go and bury her. I'll not mention tribe, but he comes from a region where burial is not something that comes easy. And the man was just smiling. I said, your wife is dead. He said, yes, sir. Dead. My wife. I stood before everybody to exchange vows. We agreed to grow old together. Now she's gone. You think they didn't pray to raise that body back? The guy I'm talking to you is a born again and tongue talking Christian. What happens? You see, I've been to the mortuary many times, my brothers and sisters. As a man of God, you can imagine what happens when people die. I've been to the mortuary. They have closed me and left me with dead bodies in a mortuary alone. Why? Because they believe I'm anointed. And I believe I'm anointed. And I stood before a dead body that would not listen to me. Wake up in the name of Jesus and the body is looking. There are times when life will act like that dead body. There are times when your finances will act like that dead body. There are times when your marriage can act like that dead body. There are times when everything around your life can act like that. Please listen to me, believers. When you pray and nothing happens, and you pray again and nothing happens, and believers agree with you and nothing happens, you must know what to do. When the devil launches an attack, do you know what to do? Or do you just know that attack is real? Hallelujah. Years ago, I counseled one of our precious ladies. She's no longer here. And this lady told me that once a guy looks at her and says, I love you, I want to go and see your parents. That's the end of it. A strange being appears to her as usual. And that's the end of that relationship. If that guy does not get out of her life, the things that will get out of his life, you will not, his finances, just like Jonah, things will begin to leave. I can tell you that lady loves God and she's a Christian. Listen, if an unbeliever goes through certain things, it is natural. What happens when a Christian woman is barren? What happens when a Christian man is impotent? What happens when a Christian couple are broke? What happens when a Christian man and his wife and their children are standing in the name of the Lord and there is no roof for them that night? They don't know where they will spend the night. Yet Jesus is still Lord over their lives. Your confidence in God and the spirit of fear that comes upon you. A lecturer called me some months ago that he was relieved from his work. Not, not ABU here. One of the institutions. And I said, what happened? And just some issue that he, oh, he truly told me under God. Now, it's not for me to vet the rightness, but from as a man of God, I can tell you I discern he was true. 
Some persons just cooked up one or two things like that and that was it. The case had been pending, pending, pending and finally they just threw that man away. Out. No job. And the man was telling me, he said, where do I start from? There were monies they were supposed to give him. Nobody's talking about it and everything has gone. I confess to you that life can be challenging. I confess to you that when Satan attacks you, he looks powerful because the attack is real. You will see it and sometimes you will wonder, Lord, where were you when this came? But tonight's message is for you. Let's look at a few scriptures. Hmm. John chapter 16 and verse 33. John 16, 33. We are really going to pray tonight. And when it's time to pray, please hold, even if it's prophetically, the hands of your loved ones and everybody you know should be listening to this message. And lift them before God as we cry. John chapter 16 and verse 33. Everyone read with me. One to read. Jesus is speaking. Uh-huh. These things I have spoken unto you. What things? That in me ye might find peace. Why? In the world ye shall have tribulation. Listen. Listen. Jesus is speaking to believers. And saying the possibility of tribulation is something that will be part of your experience. That means acclimatize your mind. Do not think it strange when these things happen. He says, be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the world. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. Listen to this message, matured believers. And run away from some of these childish things that continue to give us very aberrated views of life. For our light affliction. Why will you use the word affliction for a Christian? One who is in Christ... One who has sustained victory, the fullness of the spirit, the fullness of the Godhead in Christ resides in him. Paul is speaking and says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, he says, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For our light afflictions. So it is not unusual for believers to go through afflictions. Nobody sits and prays for it. But that is for any reason you find that reality around your circumference. Do not think it strange. Rather be equipped with the understanding to deal with it to victory. Are we together now? I will never forget years ago, I was encouraging a gentleman, generally just sharing with him. I told him, I pray for you to get a job, but in case you don't get a job, I was sharing with him certain business ideas, and the guy almost shouted on my face, I, I reject, um, you know, that he rejected the statement I was saying that there will be delay in a job, you know, the Bible says he will not, I, did, I said, no, no, I'm a man of God, I pray, I'm not saying you will be delayed, but I'm saying, if this possibility happens while you wait for that blessing be thinking of this and that I don't mean to embarrass you but till today I'm not aware except if he got it this year but till today he has not gotten a job the same wisdom he would have listened to and his foolishness there is a difference between faith and foolishness they are not the same The same way a matured mother will be mentoring a young lady who is about to get married and get pregnant. And say, we do not, we, we are not discouraging you. But we are just saying that there might be these possibilities. And that if this comes, there is a wisdom way to route it. No, I reject it. I, my, my womb is blessed. Nobody's arguing it. Until life shows you pepper 
and then you turn and say, ah, so this thing is like that. A man parked his car and ran to deal with somebody quickly and came out and met space. His car had gone. In the afternoon, broad daylight, the car that was dedicated in church, don't forget, don't forget, almost every church dedicates cars. This car was dedicated in the name of the Lord by a genuine man of God. Genuine oil was poured on it. And now a thief enters and the oil did not seem to do anything. The prophecy didn't seem to do anything. That guy kicked that car and ran away with it. And where were the angels that keep watch? Did the Bible not say that they will bear you up on their wings? What suddenly happened to that man who put a speaker, I am victorious, behind the car that was stolen? What happens when a believer is in church and armed robbers are in the house stealing? Have you not heard this? Or you don't say it in church. It should not be said, Abby. That you are worshipping God and rolling on the ground. Lord, I give you my heart. And an armed robber breaks your door. And the all-seeing eye of God does not seem to be able to restrain that robber. He enters your house and goes to look for the areas you just collected and carries it and runs away. You share the grace with joy and go back home into a week long of depression. I'm a man of faith. I'm a man that believes in miracles. But I must teach you the reality of navigating through these things in life. I don't mean to embarrass our precious lady, but one of our ladies here, I remember very clearly one time her mother, it was in a, it was in a night vigil. They were praying, not in a party, not in a club, a night vigil. They were praying, lifting up the name of the Lord, fiery prayer. Suddenly a woman stops, drops dead, and dies. That's how the mother died. I remember when that lady called me that night, crying, and saying, Apostle, how can my mother die in a place of prayer? It's the same thing like saying, how can Jesus die, but he died? How can life die? Life died. How can light be dark? Light became dark. Sometimes the unexplainable happens. Like life dying. Like resurrection being grounded on the cross. <laughs> James chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4. I like what this teaching is doing to you. You will thank me tomorrow. Add it to your spiritual arsenals. So that you will draw it forth in the days that are rainy days. For some of you, the dark cloud is already before you. And you will need to know this. James, let's go to verse, um, verse 2. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Why? Next verse. Knowing this, knowing this. Tell your neighbor, knowing this, there are things you need to know, knowing this. This is your immunity. This is your basis for stability, knowing this. There are things if you don't know, you cannot rejoice in the midst of pain. He says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 4, he says, but let patience have her perfect work. Do you know what this means? Don't interrupt what is happening. Let patience have her perfect work that ye might be mature and complete, wanting or lacking nothing. Jesus told us very clearly that it's not unusual 
for believers to be challenged by the gates of hell. And then also, the Bible did not leave us in the dark that the journey of the believer is not just a smooth road, that there are mountains and there are valleys in the making of great men in God's kingdom. Listen very carefully. There is a place where the refiner's fire I preached a controversial message years ago on the fullness of affliction. And several people said, don't mind that message, just believe, you know, and so on and so forth. There is a real experience in a believer's making called the fullness of affliction. I repeat, there is a real experience in the making of men that are as precious as gold called the refiner's fire. It is not the destroyer's fire. It is the refiner's fire. Are we together? Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2 says, Fear not, I have redeemed you. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Are we together? It says, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. Fear not, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. There are times that God will not say, I will be with you. He will say, I will help you. But there are other times he says, I'm there. Just find comfort that I'm there. There's no guarantee that I will put my hand in that process. But be assured that my presence is there. <laughs> and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Now listen, he said when you walk through fire, you don't pass through fire, you walk. There is a roasting process that takes time. There is a separation. You don't put meat around fire and you have something nice. You drop it there, then turn it again. Then turn it back to where you turned before. Then turn it again. And when it is done, people enjoy it. Listen, what do you think the anointing is? Have you found out how oil is made? That the threshing floor is not a place of laughter. That oil does not want to go through that thread. Believers, we have been spoon fed into believing that all it takes is to get born again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want to be Apostle Joshua Selman. I want to be Benny Hinn. It is doable. It is achievable. But can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? That's what Jesus said. Whoever told you there is no cup to drink and whoever told you there is no baptism. Ah, there are times when your prayers will deliberately not be answered. This is not a conventional teaching. Many people say, God forbid, all prayers are answered. I agree. It depends on the level you are seeing from. Because the Bible says there is the heel of the Lord. It says, who shall ascend to the heel of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? There are planes in the spirit. And not every experience is the same at every plane. There are planes that are general experiences. And you can write a theology from that standpoint. But you climb like the eagle to a mountain where the Holy Ghost defeathers you. Have you seen how eagles mount up and renew their wings. They rise to a high altitude. And right there. By themselves. They, they remove the old feather. And they are left naked in the cold. And they stand there. And then suddenly. New feather begins to come out slowly. There are things that the tempo has been preset. It will not be accelerated because of your tears. It was designed to be that slow. If the process hurries too much, you will not learn what you should learn. <laughs> mm. That you are trusting God for money to eat. As soon as 10,000 came, God said, carry 1,000 tight. Carry 1,000 your own. Carry 8,000 my own. Go and sow. And you say, why did it come then? I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something to you that breaks the power of mammon in your life. Because what is coming to you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not entered the heart of any man. So I need to train you. If 10,000 is difficult for you to receive, 
and you are shouting, I'm a millionaire, you are joking and flattering yourself. We continue to do these foolish things in church. That's why the world looks at us and says, these people, something is wrong with them. The faith life is not foolishness. People must be educated to understand the pathway. The way to the throne is the cross. You will never, there is no bypass. There is only one line. Man of God, hear me. You admire everyone who speaks under the influence of God's power. Fight. Let me tell you, when the anointing for service comes, it doesn't come as oil, it comes as olive. There is a breaking process that will turn that olive to the oil. It is true. There is a threshing floor in your life that is in the similitude of the threshing floor of Nabot. Where there are things that are threshed there. Unfortunately, it's not wheat, it is you. You are that living sacrifice that must lie there. Hear me. There are times that the things happening in your life can only be interpreted by those who have passed that road. No other believer can see and it can make sense. No. God gives you a rule and says for the next five months, I meet with you from 11 to 3 every night, regardless of how tired you are. And some man of God will tell you, no, it's not in the word. God doesn't do that. Pray when you need to pray. God gave you a will. I agree. And the man is right. He's not wrong. But with respect to your training, violate that instruction and power will be far from you. Far from you. Show us the ancient paths. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient paths. That so many have left. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your Listen, the path to glory does not have laughter as part of the equation. Except you are laughing by the anointing. He that sows in tears... A farmer laughing by the farm has not started farming. The size of the instrument alone will take away laughter. But you have to farm. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. There are many people who see every blessed man and just dishonor them. Ah, these young people, they just became rich. Please keep quiet. Find out the cross behind what you see. And then you will know that nobody was dashed well. You see young people with anointing, all these young boys, where did they get it from? Go and find out the pain. Find out what they were doing when you were sleeping. Find out the covenants that they, that they tied themselves with like a rope. All these people who have great ministry, be careful oh, you don't know where they are getting the crowds from. You are joking. You go and find out people's cries and covenants with God. I know a man of God who said when he went to Lagos for the first time, he slept under the bridge. He was not a poor man. God instructed him to give everything he had. He got to Lagos and slept under the bridge like a fool. Imagine if you were his relative and you saw him. He said, sorry, uncle, what are you doing here? He said, God sent me. Imagine that it was your daughter that kind of man married. Want to carry your daughter back home? But today everybody celebrates him. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, do not think it unusual when you are following the path of champions. It's a lonely road. Did you hear what I said? Do not think it unusual. I speak to you. There are many men and women of God here. You thought by now you will start a church. You are surprised you are still on, tra on training. There are others who are jumping classes and running around. Leave them home and stay quietly with God. Because there is a making. Huh. Making.
ask a coach how a champion is built. The coach will subject that person through exercises. The person will run. The person will cry. Coach, I am tired. And the coach will say, no, this is not you. The version of you I seek to produce is not the you I'm seeing. Sometimes when God pushes you, it's proof of his confidence in you. Others got there and God said, no, they've reached the elastic limit. But for you, he says, no, I know what I put in you. Let's push a little more. There are certain levels of glory that I've been waiting for who will push to this level. Everybody stopped here. You can't, don't, don't disappoint me. Push a little further. On one side, believers can be attacked. But on another side, without an attack, the default design of the pathway to glory requires, like pilgrim's progress, there are mountains to climb. Listen very carefully. There are valleys to follow. There are times you will sleep in the desert. There are times you will not know where you are going. You will just keep going and hope you are right. We didn't come this far by luck. We didn't come this far by chance. It is true we came by grace, but grace that was not abused. It is not grace that did the work. Grace empowered us to comply. Behind every glory, are tears and blood, sleepless nights and sacrifices. Ask any great man. Champions, hear me. Being a champion is not just a confession. Ask a pregnant woman. When she gives birth to the baby, like a dear one here who gave birth and we're all rejoicing. But ask her how it was. Right now, you are carrying something that others are not carrying. Don't expect them to understand you. If everybody around you understands you, it's a sign that you are not going anywhere. There are times only God can understand you. Let me tell you. There are times only God can understand you. While others are sleeping, the Holy Ghost takes away sleep from you. He giveth his beloved sleep. But from you, he took it so that you will wake up. And you are walking around your house and crying. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with me? He calls it refining. Lord, what is the name of what you are doing with my life? Is this how useless my life is going to be? You have honored other people. Look at what you are doing. At least show me where I'm going. Let me be convinced that you are leading me. And he says, the seeming confusion is part of the process. So that I teach you that you don't have to understand me to follow me. There are times that it's in your obedience that understanding comes. Lord, if you don't show me where I'm going, I will not follow. You will never get to the place of destiny. There are times you start that journey far before it later makes sense. Come out of Ai of the Chaldeans to a land that I will show you. I don't give you no vision for it. Keep moving. Carry your child along because you will kill him sooner or later. These are messages you will not hear in the church again. It's not all about receive. It's not all about be a champion. The anointing does not work like that. There is stability. I show you the way of champions. I show you the way of the ancient. I show you the, the way to build stamina where you are given the keys of territories. To him that endures to the end that will give a crown and a white stone, he said. Please don't let anybody deceive you. If it is that cup, you must drink of it. If it's that baptism, you will be baptized. If it has not started, it will start. So I'm teaching you so that you will understand that when everything in your life looks strange and God says, empty your account. When you were a baby Christian, you emptied your account and in 24 hours times 10 came. 
So you took that mindset to rush and say, ah, if it's God, I know he's Jehovah Sharp Sharp. I agree, but not for your training. Sharp Sharp will be when you are on stage. Then you prophesy to someone and he gets a miracle alert. But I tell you, not during your training, you will get no miracle alert. What you will get is the faith to endure. I shared with you my story. Today I pray and people receive breakthroughs. I shared with you years ago, when out of hunger, I took a step of faith and joined a queue in First Bank, believing that miracle alert will come. This miracle alert thing didn't just start now. It was built in the spirit. So then death works in us, that life will work in you. Whatever you die to is what you give life to people in. Let me tell you, this is how it works. You have never been disappointed. Forget about carrying the power of God. No, it's not for children. You must taste of this cup called shame. You must taste of this cup called embarrassment till your ego is drained like a transfusion from someone. And the life that I now live, it is no longer about if you are not healed, I'm not a man of God. No, your ego is gone. It went with the training. You started the ministry with ego. So every time you want to pray for the sick, your reputation is there. And he said, young man, you can't do ministry that way. It is not about the result. It is about my glory. It is painful to be approved of God. This is why you stand and run your mouth over people that God approved. You will be surprised what happens to you. It's true you are a believer, but you will know that everyone is not the same. Let no man trouble me, he said, for I bear in my body. I'm speaking to men and women inside and outside here. You are in these defining moments, and I must tell you what is happening in your life. Because if you are not careful, you will run around and meet people, and they will say, no, um, it's because you don't have faith. No, I show you the way of power. Let me tell you this. Listen, listen. I don't claim to know everything about the faith life. I am just an effective member of the body. But I tell you this, when I teach people on how the anointing is made, and I teach people how men are made, it's an office. I don't teach you cunningly devised fables. I'm like a lecturer that has been teaching this for a long time. You ignore what I tell you is to your own peril, that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. The keys of nations will not be given to you just because you prayed. There is blood that must touch that altar. And not some. Everything. It must be drained till you are empty. Your tears will not stop him. Not even your fears. You get to a point where all your fears happen to you. And there's nothing else to fear. You have come out of the realm, not by escapism. I'm afraid. One of the ways boldness is given to you is what you fear is brought before you so that you no longer can fear. God shows you your fear right before you. You pray that he takes it away, but you pass through it. And there's no longer fear. This is the making of men. This is the threshing floor of Naboth. This is how the great are made in this kingdom. Apostle, I'm calling to the ministry of kingdom finance. I think all I need is just a seminar and some impartation. <laughs> you are joking. You are even the one who will need to die more than a preacher. Because mammon is a spirit that God even recognized. Abraham, take now thy son. Thy only son whom thou lovest. Take him to a mountain. God, is this the price to be the father of nations? I'm not interested. What is that? I wait for a child for 25 years and you ask me to hand him over. Yes, sir. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. 
Listen, listen to me. I got to a point in my life where God so dealt with me, it was like there was no life again. That you get to a point where you don't know the name of your life or destiny again. No name. You are like Cain. And the more I kept moving like the wind, I didn't know that's how spiritual men are. Because it says the wind bloweth where it listeth. You cannot tell where it's going or where it's coming. So is one who is led by the Spirit of the Lord. I truly wanted the power of God in my life. And I prayed. I said, Lord, please give me power. I thought the answer would be a bed that would land on my head. And you say, son, from this day, I have given you power. Power to open doors that no man can shut, you are joking. Power to speak over nations? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Those keys are hidden in your scars. You keep them there. Oh, I apologize if you don't like what I'm teaching you tonight. But this meeting is for the great. Because I see that season coming again. It's like a cycle. And a season comes when there is a new recruitment. A new recruitment. It's always like that. And then the ones that have been recruited, God starts working with them. After some years, he says, now there is a, an opening again. That can scare me. That can scare me. Because I know I'm dead already. In my reason, in my seasons, I cry out, this is the end of me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Listen, please listen to me. Not every negative thing happening to you is demonic, is of the devil. N not every negative thing will answer to prayer. There are certain things where it is the grace of God that will be sufficient for you. There are times in my life I fasted and fasted. I didn't know the difference between being full and being empty. This is our generation. We, we truly have this honor. Truly have this honor. Please don't just see every young man you are seeing and believe that just because they are young, it means that they were giving certain things as a dash. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. There were nights when everyone would be sleeping 
I will be on the roof of vet medicine in ABU. The roof of it in the night. From night till morning in that roof. Seeing visions and revelations. But staying there in that cold with mosquitoes. Just a little inconvenience and people begin to complain. You are talking of giving some seed. I never had the opportunity to spend my scholarship once. Once. It was a sacrifice before it arrived. So when today someone says, Apostle, give me your phone, let me send you money. Please, there is a track record. Let's honor the pain of people. Let's honor the pain of people. Man of God, the anointing is for the taking. Grace is for the taking. The pride that we have just because of our one, one or two, two hours prayer. <laughs> I will never forget times when I will lock myself for three days. My eyes will not see the sun. I don't know whether it's day or night. I don't know whether it's nine o'clock or ten o'clock no sleep with these eyes open praying from morning till night morning till night morning till night Shaka -ta -ta -ta. lord expand this vessel expand this vessel let me be a, a conduit of your power that was a prayer not for myself Lord, for your glory, let it please you that I will be used as a vessel. And one day God vowed a vow and said, my son, I give you my presence as a gift. There is a threshing floor in the life of every believer. Please hear me. I'm addressing those who have been attacked and those who are going through seasons they do not understand. Do not think that it is demonic. Please sit down and give me a few minutes. And then we are going to pray tonight. Let me get back again to those who have been attacked. And show you a few keys. It applies to everybody. But please write this down. I remember praying years ago and I said, Lord, why is it that when I speak, nothing happens? I read the Bible and I saw in the life of Peter that while Peter yet spake these things, the Holy Ghost fell on all they that had him, not all they that believed in him. If your ears could hear Peter, the Holy Ghost will come to you. I said, Lord, why don't I see this in my life? not for pride and God let me know that everything in the kingdom is yours for the taking but there are dimensions not all things are possible at every level there are real dimensions number one the first key that I will give you to minister comfort tonight Overflow one. I'm seeing lights all over overflow one. This is what I'm seeing. Lights. I'm seeing an impartation. Lights. 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 Just like, like thunder, like lightning. Light. I believe it's an impartation. Just overflow one. Just caught my attention. In the name of Jesus Christ. That which God has in store. Let it come upon you in Jesus' name. Number one. The first key that you need to survive these seasons, whether a season of attack or a season of pruning and dealing and refining. Number one, never lose your joy. Please never lose your joy. In this kingdom, joy is strength. Never, never lose your joy. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Please write quickly. 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Not always. Always as you go. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I repeat, rejoice. Joy. Joy is of the Holy Ghost though. Joy is not just clownish laughter. You don't have to laugh to be in joy. Lord, I don't know the name of what you are doing, but I rejoice. I rejoice, I rejoice, I rejoice. I rejoice. <laughs> I rejoice. <laughs> True joy will come in form of a melody on your lips. A melody that does not make sense. Sometimes a melody that mocks your situation. Still sing it. Joy. Joy. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. Popular scripture. For many of you don't know where it is in the Bible. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10b. It says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That the joy of the Lord that means when you lack strength in this kingdom, what you lack is joy. In the physical world, when you lack energy, you are given food. Is that true? In the realm of the spirit, when you lack joy, I mean when you lack strength, what you are given to eat is joy. Sometimes God does not give you the solution. He gives you joy. Joy. Joy, joy, joy. He said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. The shame, yes sir. The pain, yes sir. The no admission, yes sir. The disappointed meeting that I called people and I said, sick people come. And at the end, nobody was healed. And that you went back home and somebody sent a text and said, next time be a serious man of God before you call us. The Bible says, count it all joy. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes alive every time I hear your voice. There's a joy in my heart. In spite of all the sorrows that surrounds me and this joy that I have only comes alive every time I hear your voice. It comes, it comes alive every time. Can you watch your car on fire? Your 2.5 or 3.5 million. And you stand and say to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Can you watch your job? And you stand at the gate of your office. It was once yours. But now no longer yours. And say in it, oh God, I give you glory. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Can you stand before a corpse and you are looking at a dead body that you fasted for days to come back to life and you say, in spite of it, oh God, with the tears coming from my eyes, I still give you glory. I thought the dead body would come back to life, but now I have prayed. I give you glory. Never lose your joy. Let nothing in this life steal your joy. Not lack of money. Not lack of a child. Please listen to me. This gloominess we carry around is cheating us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Make up your mind to rejoice in the Lord. Why are you rejoicing and crying? I'm crying because of the reality of my pain. But I rejoice because joy brings harvest. You will sow in tears but you will reap in joy, not with joy, in joy. If there is no joy, there is no harvest. Number two. 
What do you do in these seasons? Engage in strategic prayer. Listen, the seasons of attack in a believer's life or a season of pruning and making, they are seasons of deep spiritual emphasis. They are seasons of prayer and intercession. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. Zakata. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray. Not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call god names and say i will backslide let him pray psalm 34 please from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what all my fears next verse we are reading to four to seven they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer God grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember i may be wrong i'm not saying you should do it please i'm not saying you should do it but as far as i'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to, a week should never pass that you did not fast. You are joking. You are joking. Not with what you are doing to hell. You are joking. Seven days. Ah, no. Himarama. Imarama Imarama To the king who sits on the throne Imarama To the king Listen, let me tell you this I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory is not gotten shouting around, just making noise. 
Real men of power contact power when men sleep. May God give you the grace to rise above sleep. I'm praying from the... May God give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you. That God can wake you up in the night. No light. Off the light. You are praying. Don't allow distractions. You are praying the next thing. You see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract. Off the light. You can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. Don't come on stage and talk nonsense. Lion of the tribe of Judah, Rose of Sharon, Lily of the Valley, Rose of this and that and that. God is not a scammer. He's not a magician. No track record in the secret place. You will flatter yourself to nothing in it, in the open. Please learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Learn to pray in the night. Receive grace to dedicate night times and pray. God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you'll feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you're a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages. And there are levels of power contact. Groanings that cannot be uttered. You get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray. There are times that only one word, one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes. Pray it. You are receiving power. Prayer is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior. Don't joke with your destiny like that. Don't joke with your destiny like that. The Bible says to enter and shut the door behind you. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret. You don't need to have a prayer point. You don't need to have a prayer point. Just stay there and begin to pray. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is winning. Listen, can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch. My brother and my sister, if you pray from your heart, some things will shift. You will wake up in the morning and know I shifted this through prayer. There are attacks that only prayer can challenge. Pray for
for me, pray for me is wonderful. But you must become the priest of your destiny. Can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes? Salamakata. Senakandas kamahasabash. Rakata bakato sopakoto sheketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Sasete shanahas kabaratos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the wild horse. Through the king sits upon the wild horse. Shela bakata rekotosia. Imarama. To the king who sits on the throne. To the king who sits on the throne. War to them who are ease in Zion. War to them who are ease in Zion. King, who sits upon the white horse? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, Use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Prayer is a strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. 
from henceforth, even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray. And say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms. And say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability. Power. Stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Stability, O oh God. Stability, O oh God. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Your strength is small. Give me capacity, endurance, stamina. The grace to pass through for the sake of my family. The grace to pass through for the sake of my generation. The grace to pass through for the sake of my, my loved ones. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be weak, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord. Koinonia, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Don't entertain weakness. Be strong in the Lord. You are not the weak ones. You are strong. Hallelujah. The third key I will give you tonight. Number one, never lose your joy. Number two, engage in strategic prayer and intercession. Number three, prophesy. The power of the spoken word. There is no greater time in your life to engage the creative power of God's word than when things just go haywire. The power of the spoken word. The power of the spoken word. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers chapter 14 and verse 28. Numbers 14 Say unto them, as truly as I live, saith the Lord, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do unto you. There are times that you don't just pray. You pray till the spirit of prophecy comes on you. When it does come, you speak. He said prophesy. Speak to the dry bones. Prophesy. All dry bones, hear ye the word of the Lord said prophesy there are times you need to prophesy there are times you need to speak Psalms 138 and verse 8 very powerful scripture Psalms 138 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly we are going to pray the Lord will perfect that which concerned me thy mercy O Lord endure it forever Forsake not the works of my own hands. You lift it in prayer. I prophesy and I declare. The Lord is perfecting everything concerning me. 
I declare that I come out victorious. The Bible declares that goodness and mercy follow me. You don't just cry and say, hey, yeah, so is this how my life is going to be? This is what I've become now. No, sir. Nothing moves till you prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You see, that's why it is important for a believer to be full of God's word. If you are scripture bankrupt, you will not know what to say. Prophecy is not just when God reveals something like word of knowledge. You can take the word of God and begin to create possibilities. It's important to know the word. It's important to know the word. When it looks like things around you are not working, you go to Psalm 3. Many are they that rise up against me. Many are they which say, where is your God? He says, but thou, O Lord, art a shield for me. You are my glory, the lifter up of my head. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heavens and the earth. It's unfortunate for believers who don't know the word. You must trust God for grace to sit down and gather relevant scriptures that address the issue of concern and stand up like the priest that you are. Put those words in the lips of faith like Kenyon would say and begin to release them with true supernatural power. The Lord is my light and salvation. The Lord is my light and salvation. I reject confusion in my life. I hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk ye in it. This is how to pray. Is someone ready to pray? Listen to me. There are many of us who have gotten to the stage in our seasons where it is our prophecy that will bring the morning. If you don't prophesy, nothing will happen. Is someone ready to pray? If you don't know what to say, go and hold the hands of someone who knows what to say and agree with them. Lift your voice and begin to speak. There has to be a scripture that you know. It shall keep them in perfect peace whose minds are stayed towards him. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. From them all, from them all. Herantos calabras ketos shalakotos yahasa. And I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten, the palmer worm, the caterpillar. It will give them beauty for ashes, joy for the spirit of mourning. That they might be called the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and he shall be glorified. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall ye not know it? I make a way even in the wilderness, streams in the desert. The Lord shall perfect all that concerns me. He la parota salaka to prendegatela koshabahasa. All the days of my appointed time, I wait till my change comes. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. So said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for us. He said, the Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. I shall lay up gold as dust, even the gold of Ophir. Gentiles come to my light, they are kings even to the brightness of my rising. For my shame, I receive double. Elas kabarandes kalapro oshoda bahazi.
but my head shall thou exalt like the horn of a an unicorn and I shall be anointed with fresh oil fresh oil fresh oil blessed in my going out blessed in my coming in blessed is the work of my hands my needing trough in the name of Jesus Christ Blessed is a man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commands. My seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in my house, and my righteousness endures forever. Pray. Pray. You are not just speaking, you are creating. Declare thou that ye might test be justified. For by your words you are justified. And by your words you are condemned. You are bringing before God your strong reasons. Above only, above only, above only, above only, in the name of Jesus, above only, above only, a sign and a wonder, a testament of the grace of God, a testament of the favor of God, a testament of the hand of God, a testament of the mercy of God. Palabaroto segetele mahasabadia. Though weeping endures for a night, joy comes with the morning. Prophesy joy in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 32, Genesis chapter 32, the Bible says, Jacob wrestled with God and he said, leave me for the day breaketh. He says, I will not let you go unless, listen, unless you bless me. Here's how God blessed him. What is your name? What is your identity? What have people known you with? I'm about to change it. That's how I bless you. If I've blessed you truly, it means something they used to say about you. A proverb should no longer be heard. What is your name? And he said, Jacob, a cheat and a supplanter. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Why? For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. We are going to pray. Father, change my name. In this season, listen. Change my name means change my experience. Change my name means change the proverb. Let this proverb not be used about me again. That God cannot show him mercy. That God cannot lift my family. Let this proverb change. Like father, like son. No, sir. Open your mouth and cry change my name change my story and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren Jabez the mother called him Jabez named him in sorrow but Jabez was angry he said oh that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast is someone praying Lord change my financial name Change my ministerial name. Change my marital name. 
change my destiny name out of the abundance of your mercy by the encounter I've had with you. Change my name. Change my story. Change my name. Give me a testimony. Shut the mouths of the wicked. Prove once again that you are God and that by yourself. Please pray. God answers prayers. Give me a new name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next prayer point. The Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and it became twisted. Lord, may I never depend on my strength. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not on your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, do not be wise in your own understanding, but fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You are going to pray. Lord, I've trusted my certificate. I've trusted my connection. I've trusted my beauty. I've trusted my spirituality. But tonight I take my eyes away from all of this. As advantageous as they are, they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. I look to you and to you alone. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. We are praying. I take my eyes away from man. It is true that my blessings come through men, but my eyes are fixed on you. Is someone praying? Like the brazen serpent that Moses made, he said, whoever looks to that serpent, the real one will not strike at him. Vain is anything that you put your strength on. So Jacob, I see you stable without me. I touch your point of stability so that you will be ever dependent on me. The last prayer point. He said he blessed him and the sun arose. Until then it was night. The war happened in the night. The weeping happened in the night. But then he says the sun arose and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, the face of God. He says for I have seen God face to face. When Moses saw the face of God, he returned back with a testimony. Is someone ready to pray? Lord, let the sun arise. It is true that weeping endures for a night, 
but I believe I'm standing at the dawn of my morning. Lift your voice and prophesy. Let my son arise. Son arise. Financial son arise. Ministerial son arise. The encounter is over. The lessons have been learned. The impartations have been received. Therefore, night time be turned today. Night time be turned today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep standing. We're rounding up. Let me tell you three things that come into your life when you break through with God. Number one, strange dimensions of favor. There is, a, there is a, an unusual degree of favor. It's God's signature. He writes it upon your life that the training for this phase has come to an end. You have been approved. He uses favor. Dimensions of doors you never dreamt opening. I can tell you this happens. It doesn't matter how the night is. That when your day breaks, you will see favor that will bring you to your knees. When I talk of favor, I'm not talking money. I'm talking of the hearts of kings and nobles. Money is very small. God will take the hearts of kings and nobles and give you. It will be like a charm. You will call on a man and nations will respond. You have become Beulah and Hephzibah. The delight. Number two. Genuine, authentic spiritual power. Genuine spiritual power. Not trial and error. Not like God will come. Not like God will move. Something solid upon you. Provable. Genuine spiritual power. You speak the purposes of God to men's lives. And you will shift lives overnight. Power. 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 Number three, the third thing that happens to you when you stand with God is that God multiplies both your spiritual and your physical influence. He increases the reach of the grace he has put upon your life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every man is limited by the jurisdiction a portion for his grace to function. There are men who can stand from anywhere and speak over Nigeria. It doesn't matter. The grace given to them and the expansion they have attained unto in the spirit covers that sphere. Elijah stood in one place and spoke over an entire land. There were times when Jesus had to leave one land to enter another land to pray for a person. What was the reward of the five, two, and one talent, greater territory, greater influence in the spirit. When kings conquered certain lands, they had increased territory. America is called America today because it's the unity of many states. One American state can be three times Nigeria. One state. Are we together now? Yes. Is why it's called United States of America. In Nigeria, you can pass through a state in 30 minutes. And there are times in the state you will fly for hours from one state to the other. There is no state that is more than one hour, 10 minutes. Maiduguri to Lagos is the farthest distance. 
One hour, ten minutes exactly, you are there. But you will fly for hours. That is the reason why whoever sits as the president of that territory must be respected by every devil whether they like it or not. It is the reason why the American president is the number one president. Because there are many in one state is the destiny of many nations. The per capita income of just one state will swallow up many African countries. So when God expands your sphere, dimensions where your grace would not reach, now you can speak from one place and they can hear from home. Before you had to go home for them to hear. But now God has expanded your influence. And they say, won't you come again? He said, no problem. He has upgraded the grace. For I am also a man under authority. Right from where I am, I can say to one, come. And he cometh. Go. And he goeth. It's like a ranking in the spirit. One of my old secondary school classmates my father got to meet with him recently and now he's a major in the army i think at the threshold of the next rank what's the next rank after after major lieutenant colonel yes i think soon that's what they are going to give him he used to be a fearful chicken like young guy i remember when they take us from joss to go to our school he will start crying even before we go out of Joss. I never cried once to leave home. It was a delight and a pleasure to get out. That guy was so girlish and feminine. I wondered, but that guy today is a major. Sometimes he would stand and do some things, you know, he could see a roach, cockroach, and you know how ladies would jump. But today he can tell me, kneel down, hands up. You civilian, except for the fact that <laughs> when I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Can we spend two minutes to pray? Let's pray the prayer of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Please lift your voice and pray. Enlarge me, O God. Take away the spirit of smallness from my life. It doesn't give you glory that I remain small. Not after an encounter with you. Not after seasons, defining moments with you. Pray the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. That thou wouldest expand, enlarge my territory. Pray for Koinonia. Pray for your business. Lord, enlarge my territory. He said, where we meet with you is too straight. Let us move beyond the Jordan. Please pray. God is hearing you. You are not wasting your time. It has been said, no one rose beyond certain levels in your family but can you pray the prayer of Jabez expand my territory oh God I will go where the fathers have not gone I will eat the milk and the wine of Canaan I will not die in the wilderness he did not bring me from Egypt to leave me in the wilderness. There is a land that flows with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray you don't have to come out. But I want to pray specially for people in this place tonight. You just sense in your life 
that there seems to be a fierce attack on your life. This is not just a dealing with God. This one you know is demonic. It's like all hell breaking loose over you, over your family, over your spiritual life, over whatever it is, your business. I want to pray for you and I want you to believe. It is for this cause that the Lord says to not neglect the gathering of the brethren because it's an opportunity for a supply of his power. Even when your seasons come to the end, there has to be a man. He said, destroy it not for there is a blessing in it. I want to pray for such people. Suddenly your prayer life just went down. You come fast from six to six. By 11, you are almost collapsing. You can't even breathe. It's an attack. As a man of God, you found out that it looks like you opened the Bible and your page is empty. You are not seeing anything again. Every verse looks confusing. Every. Something is wrong. Strange attack on your church. Members are suddenly leaving. Everybody is suddenly hating you. People you have labored to raise in the gospel are now turning against you. It's an attack. You used to prophesy correctly, but now you just found out that you entered a season of nonsense. Everything you say is not correct. Word of knowledge, not correct. Your prophecy, not correct. It's an attack. It doesn't mean you are wrong. It means the devil is attacking your credibility so that you will no longer be trusted. Finances. You are a hard-working, diligent person. All of a sudden, it looked like holes came in your pocket. All doors just closed. No destiny helper again. Even those who promised to help you, it's as if something turned their backs against you. It's an attack, my brothers and my sisters. All of a sudden, your children started becoming something else. People you have labored and trained. They now no longer listen to you. You say A, they say B. You say keep quiet, they tell you to keep quiet. Something is wrong. Strange, devilish dreams. Nightmares. You can't dare lie down on your bed to sleep. Here they come. Pressing you, molesting you attacking you, it will take the grace of God to struggle yourself to wake up. It's an attack. What of reports from home? You are enjoying the glory of God, just about to take a nice step. They just call you. They pay you some areas that you are trusting God to just use and buy a small land and you hear an attack. That someone needs chemotherapy or, or whatever it is. And they need to spend thirty-five to 100000 every week. And it is you they are depending on. Say devourer. Say it again. Say devourer. I say devourer. Because you don't do it. Everybody says you are a wicked young man. Who is allowing your father or mother to die. And you pay 70000 $70, in in five or six weeks. Your money is gone. There are many ways believers can be attacked. Can I pray for you? I don't know who is in that category, but I believe the Lord put this meeting tonight. You don't have to kneel. Just believe. Believe. Mm. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. Jesus, the Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. Father, you have anointed me for the sake of your people. And I bring before you, O oh God, 
the thousands of people in this place thousands and millions others from around the world who are being fiercely attacked by the devil and his cohorts in an attempt to corrupt your testimony over their lives I bring before you families that have been fiercely attacked businesses fiercely attacked destinies marriages spiritual lives ministries churches and by that attack your people have been discouraged they have been exhausted and frustrated tonight in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every spirit responsible for this attack by the spirit that raised Christ from the dead we crush the works of darkness now Pay attention, I'm praying for you. I decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants, activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives, over churches, over ministries, over individuals mysterious diseases that you had no part in I pray by the God of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you I challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of Zaria, the spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names, we command that spirit is banished from this territory. The spirit of discouragement, the spirit of exhaustion, in the name of Jesus, we declare be gone now and forever. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. soon going to pray the Lord rejects Saul as a king and now looks at David but there was no priest to confirm what God wanted the priest that was available still wanted Saul and David could not be king God Almighty had left Saul and wanted David Samuel said no I still want Saul and God remain helpless. Think about it. God kept begging Samuel, cooperate with me because David will never be king. That God intended it does not guarantee his manifestation. Between God's heart and your result is a priest carrying the ark. That's why you can have a dream. You see yourself collecting a, a job letter you saw it in 2014, no priest. 2015, no priest. That your dreams show you Eden. Your life shows you Adulam. There's a system of translation. Are we together? And all of a sudden, 
the Lord now spoke to Samuel. He didn't quarrel Samuel. He said, Samuel, how long will you keep weeping? Seeing that I have rejected Saul as king. Rise up, carry your horn. Go to the house of Jesse. Go and anoint the next king of Israel, paraphrasing. And David remained there. I'm sure David will be in the wilderness and say, when will my change come? The change was in a negotiation between God. God already intended. In God's mind, this is the next king. And the king will sit with sheep and say, oh Lord, when will my breakthrough come? And God will say, the day a priest comes. All of a sudden, the priest agrees and God's will continues moving. A priest refuses and God remains. Moses was wise. He said, Lord, I already know you too well. Don't ever let us go here if your presence. If that I could not go before us, I'm not going. No. Moses said, because my going is as good as wasting my time. I, I, I know what is before us. And he said, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. Rest is a gift. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Rest is a gift. My presence will go with you. And I, through my presence, will give you rest. My presence will clear up the spirits. And whatever you do, when you read 2 Chronicles 20, the same thing happened. Three kings came together to defeat the people of God. And all of a sudden, the Bible says, the priests and the musicians were now in front and they began to sing. You are good and your mercies endure forever. The ark started fighting them. Who is the fool that goes for war with gold in his pocket and silver? And the Bible says all of a sudden they turn. Can you imagine allies together? When the ark starts fighting for you, it's fearful. Are we together? Fearful. You are standing close to danger. It never touches you. Before it touches you, something touches it. The priesthood. The people started killing themselves. And the Bible says everyone helped to kill another. That's not a man fighting. That's the ark fighting. And all of a sudden, when the last two were left, he killed one. And the ark said, what are you waiting for? And he carried the knife, killed himself. And when the people came, they found gold, they found treasures. When the ark fights, it fights thoroughly. When you fight, if your hand paints you like Moses and start going down, you see that? They can defeat you. But you carry the ark and let it begin to fight. They kept the ark and they kept Dagon. These people brought an entity, a god, enshrined with spirits called Dagon. The Bible did not show us there were any physical contact. By morning, Dagon fell face forward on the ground. The superiority of the presence of God above any enchantment and any ordinance. When you see the ordinances that have been enshrined by your cultism and all of these things prevail, is because the ark has not been lifted. Tonight we have come in this place to initiate a system of priesthood over the difficult situations of people to say lord if i want you for a few minutes just suspend the issue of job or whatever whether it is job or the issue of delay it is still the same jericho causing it any part of jericho is still jericho are you hearing what i'm saying the jericho that causes failure is the same Jericho that causes barrenness. It is still Jericho. The Bible didn't say Jericho. Do you know, look at the interesting thing. Jericho fell flat, but the woman who stayed in the fence, how God delivered her that she didn't fall flat with it is a mystery we don't understand. But the Bible tells us everything fell down flat. To break every chain, Break every chain. 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 He 
is to break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Listen. Brothers and sisters, we're about to pray. But I plead with you in the name of the Lord to believe this mystery as simple as it looks. And you will watch the wonder in your life. Stop focusing on physical things. You will cheat yourself a thousand times. Nothing on earth has the ability to stand on its own. If anything on earth stands, there is a force keeping it. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Listen, the type of sword that kills the enemies is not as important when Jericho is down. Anything can bless you when the realm of the spirit is down. Listen, I have seen anointed men and women of God, people I know love God with all their heart, but they can never prevail in ministry because they have been fighting physically they do everything and sometimes you wonder and say ah, look how great this brother is look how great this sister is is there no ear on earth to hear what you carry and honor you for it hallelujah listen people make all kinds of gifts for me as you can imagine people make all kinds of gifts and sometimes i see what people do and i'm shocked I say life is so unfair. How can this brother, this sister be this gifted and yet be begging? And you see someone come out from somewhere and priesthood goes before him and in one week his life has changed. They can even be sarcastic. Priesthood will make them take life for granted. There is a system of ease that God wants to bring to your life. Please hear me. There are families here listening. You have done all you know. Why don't you allow God? Allow the ark come into your home tonight. And let it go round Jericho. Allow the ark come into your life tonight. Let it go round Jericho. And you will watch that which was dead come alive by itself. Hallelujah. I was told recently about a young man, very nice, wonderful young man who loves God. Everything you know in life, including good things, fight him. And recently, I think something happened. They stole a phone. And the person who stole the phone was within the vicinity of the guy. And he was sitting down. The man kept the phone there. And police came and took two of them together. I got a text. The person sent me a text. And when he narrated everything that was happening, I usually don't call people back, but I was touched. I called him. I said, where are you? He said, Apostle, look at my life. Nothing works. I said, how did you get to the police station? He said that um, they found somebody with phone and carried him. You think that's ordinary? Maybe that young man, breakthrough is coming for him. Another thief from somewhere steals, comes to drop a phone close to you. Does the police not have common sense to probe? And they carry you together. Because there is a spirit coordinating this. It looks like coincidence. Someone just falls from a chair. Just a little chair like this. And all of a sudden one side of him paralyzes. It's a lie. It's not that chair that paralyzed him. Be smart. People fell from trees plucking mangoes. And they were fine. They cleaned their hands and carried the mango and went away. You fall from a small chair and paralyzes your leg. No. A a coincidence navigated the chair was just the scapegoat it's not about the chair 
tonight we are going to pray before I begin to minister. You are going to say, Satan, so you have deceived me through this situation. I've been focusing on the situation, whereas it is never really about the situation. It is about Jericho attempting to stand and challenge me. I thought it was all about job. I thought it was all about marriage. I thought it was all about children. I thought it was all about my background. Now I'm learning that anything would have still caused the same problem, provided Jericho is standing there. But Joshua, gather the priests. Gather the priests. Habalakato sebrakatadi adabalaba. Listen, look at me. I want you in the mind of your spirit. Look at that job issue. Look at that issue and say, I will no longer be deceived. You are not the problem. The problem is Jericho. It is never that the business cannot work. It is never that helpers cannot come. Once Jericho is still standing here, nothing can go in. Nothing can come out. Lift your voice and begin Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shout it one more time in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I challenge. I challenge the spirits. The spirit. The ordinances. The ordinances. The spiritual forces. The spiritual forces that are responsible. That are responsible for the physical tragedies in my life. Physical tragedies by the mystery of the blood. By the mystery of the blood. I declare. I declare that victory must be established in life. Lift your voice yes. and pray. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, the Bible tells us, listen, that we have a high priest and that that high priest is a man. The man, Jesus, he qualifies to be a priest, not the spirit, Jesus. The man occupying a priesthood that is higher than the Aaronic priesthood. The Bible says his priesthood is of a better covenant after the order of Melchizedek. A priesthood with no beginning, a priesthood with no end. That there is that eternal priesthood of Jesus. Listen carefully. We are talking about very deep foundational issues here. Jesus, the man, the priest that took his blood 
the bible tells us that he went to the heavenly tabernacle and poured his blood upon that altar once and for all once and for all the advocacy of that priesthood is superior listen every enchantment and every divination on earth needs the sun to walk or the moon the bible says down listen without the sun and the moon if god withdraws the sun and the moon every cause every altar dies immediately because every other priesthood on earth or cultic depends on the power of the sun or the moon are we together and so the bible says the sun will no more give you sunlight you will not need it the moon the sun and moon they are important but i'm introducing something jehovah god himself will be the light that sponsors your altar the same way listen listen that men can say we will do the sacrifice by 12 p.m when there is a full moon and they stand and manipulate the the they use geometry and everything to tap the powers of the sun and the moon and god says these things are inferior i come with another priesthood my own self the son of righteousness i am the light are we together i want you to be tired of what is happening in your life and family i tell you the truth when we begin to pray and i begin to minister many of you will see cheap victories cheap victories. amen this is when you will know that this thing is not just about physical efforts do you know brothers and sisters listen let me teach you something for as long as you keep focusing on individual physical problems your frustration continues i can tell you all of them are sponsored by a central force hear me all of them the same electricity is causing this fan to run the same electricity is causing the mic to work if you want a shutdown off the source of the power you can destroy the mic the phone will still work that's what we have come to do tonight a total shutdown then you will find out it was never a financial issue you will find out it was never a health issue it was never a promotion issue it was an altar issue it was an ordinance issue pray one prayer before i start ministry lord visit the foundation of every challenge in my life and my family lift your voice and pray everyone that asked receive it lord visit the foundation why is ministry not working why is my spiritual life dying why am i not growing in the anointing what is the mystery oh god Lord, why the circle of tragedies? One tragedy after another. One tragedy. Hallelujah. 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 Please just, just be silent for a moment. I want to start ministering now. Let's just, the Lord is giving me instructions. Just, just be silent. Stand where you are. Um, something is happening inside, outside, everywhere. The Lord is showing me something very strange. Now, um, let me just describe what I'm seeing. I'm seeing something that looks like um this thing people wear what's the name this thing that looks like a um, ladies thing that men wear that that looks like a yes that that thing that's what i'm seeing on many people 
and the Lord is telling me on everyone that I see that thing in there is a very strange deliverance because that I'm hearing hidden glory and I want to pray please you don't don't shout don't do anything just let me flow you start bringing those people out I'm going to pray now for those group of people I'm seeing it because I'm seeing that those people no matter what you do your glory is never seen you will struggle and try but nothing ever happens now in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands just silence everywhere father I'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit and tonight is a miracle service from overflow one two three and the main auditorium and those online anyone here that is a victim of this that I see by the power of priesthood I come as an act bearer an envoy tonight and Lord I decree and declare let there be deliverance now right now right now right now bring them out I prophesy I decree and declare many of you will feel that physical fire upon your head I'm praying now physical fire coming upon your head let them go let them go I command liberty they must go I come with the rod of a higher priesthood I decree and declare they must go free Restore their glory now. Jacos Kapatariata and Teketa Kaskotariataji Rakatoka Tabalia. Hidden glory. That's what I hear in the spirit. Hidden glory. Hidden glory. There is glory, but covered in Jericho, covered by the fence of Jericho. Pakapata Kato Sabrakatalia. Everywhere, inside, outside. I'm praying now. Please just be sensitive. Let's, let's do what God is directing us to do. Tonight there must be total victory. Total victory. Now I'm praying for families. The anointing of God will come on individuals. But it is for families. It will come on you. Once that anointing comes on you now. Know that God is visiting your family. Lord I pray now. I release the sword, the sword of the Lord, in the name of Jesus to every family. If there is a family here whose glory has been buried, nobody rises. Where are they? I decree and declare now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Shakata Parakata. I don't know what altar manipulated the glory of any family here, but in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God in the name of Jesus I command now by the power of the Holy Ghost let there be emancipation emancipation for every family hidden glory hidden glory the Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and then we beheld his glory The Lord is still touching people. The Lord is still touching people. That's why you came. You have done the listening. Let me pray now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Something serious is going to happen here now. Now, I want to pray a very serious prayer. The Lord is leading me to pray this prayer. I just had in my spirit altars of poverty. Hold on. Just keep your hands lifted. Father, I'm praying. You spoke to my ears. Altars of poverty. If there is any family here in an ordinance, under that cause, nothing works. There is nothing you do physically to be able to bless the family and support the family that works. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, let there be deliverance now. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Altars of poverty. Everywhere, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three online. If there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose family is under this siege 
I decree and declare now your emancipation comes tonight. For all of you in front here, I speak to the spirits. You know my voice. In the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you let them go now. One, two, three, go, go. Out of them now. Out of every one of their destinies. Out of their lives. Shekatos Kabariata. I invoke a priesthood higher than any ordinance upon their lives. Release their families now. Release their destinies now. You know, the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing a vision now. You know how it used to be in a slave market that you sell a physical person and collect money. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Like people with only trousers, sold and money. This is exchange of destinies. I believe that this is very prophetic. Let me be honest. I know some of you may not believe it, but the destiny you are living is not your own. A king slaughtered his son so that he will remain alive. There are men that exchange destinies. They, they, a king carried his future and said, Child, the death I'm supposed to die, you die it. There are people like that. The destiny God allocated for you, you know this is not your life. Your dreams and your vision show something else. In the name of Jesus, pray now. Lift your hands. I declare the spirits that exchange and merchandise the destinies of men by the power of the Holy Ghost at the count of three if there be anyone under the sound of my voice whose destiny has been manipulated I command now at the count of three be set free one, two, three be free now be free now! Be free now! Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Hallelujah. Oh, Sephia, Sephia, Sephia. Like Sephia, I'm hearing a name, Sephia. Who is that, please? Let's, let's hurry up. There is a lot to do. I want us to settle down and really pray for the sick. Sephia, who is that? Her eyes, Matia. Her eyes, hey, her eyes. Your name is Sophia. How about you, Madam? The Lord will locate the person. I'm standing here and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord touching the person God wants me to speak to. Her eyes, hey, malama, na, na, ma, se, na, ne, na, na, na. I'll pray for all of you. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I deliver this lady now, this lady on red. I command that spirit that has tied down your life and your glory be gone. For you, it's over now. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, I release you now by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be set free right now. Set free, the Lord bring liberty. Liberty now. I command those altars to leave you in the name of Jesus Christ the anointing of the Holy Ghost bad luck bad luck I take it out of your life 
the spirit of I'm seeing a lot of bad luck I take it out of your life now release their destinies now in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there is a lady a physical person appeared to you in the room this is a woman whose face you know like a relative physically where is that person please someone uh, you were not dreaming appeared to you and there was a conversation from that day your life never became this please don't be ashamed i want to pray for you please don't waste our time we have a lot to do the lord is ministering to me someone appeared i'm not saying you were in a dream this thing is somewhere you had a conversation with someone physical who is that person i want to pray for you please when you find that person let the person come quickly who is Ola? i'm hearing a name Ola. Ola. i don't know if that's the full name but there's Ola. o-l-a there's someone with that name Ola. please don't come out if it's not your name who is this huh your name is Ola. i want to pray for you look at me rejoice break through us come to your family this lady I'm, I'm Kai. Look at the evil and the witchcraft I see over this lady's family. All these people are, please help me find out. Why are they here? All of them, their names are all are interesting. Come. That lady with cap, come. Your salvation has come. Come. This lady with, lift your hands. Over now. Over now. Over now. Calm down. Madam, come. I'm seeing what happened. Yes. yes. A woman appeared to me that it shall be never would be able to physical. Physically. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Look at this. When was that? Last year, May. She appeared. Face to face and tell me, it shall never will be able to. No matter how, whatever you take, that you are not feeling fine, the medicine will not work. And from that, hold on. From that day, something started moving in your body. Yes. It will move and come to your back and come to your chest area. Look at this. Are, are you seeing a swelling here? You are seeing this? A woman appears to her. I prophesy to someone here. Jakas koto parakatia. Empre ketoso bataria talikata. Anyone in fraternity with the realm of darkness over your life, I curse those people now. I curse those people now. I curse those people now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Madam, I deliver you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be set free now. In the name of Jesus. The living and the dead don't have anything in common. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is speaking to me. There are some of you, all you see is dead people. All you see is no matter... A bulk of your sleep is encounter with dead people. I'm prophesying, lift your hands. The anointing of the Spirit is coming on such people now. In the name of Jesus, if there is anyone here in strange encounters with the dead, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, I command a separation now. The Spirit of Hades, I speak to you. The Spirit of Hades, Christ has triumphed over you. Oh, death. Take away your sting. Take away your sting. Hallelujah. There are a number of you here. I presume you are all Ola, including this gentleman on wheelchair. That's your son. That's your brother. What happened to him? What happened to him? Accident. Since when? 2015. And he paralyzed you. You can't move now. Oh dear. We are going to pray for the sick. But I want to pray for Ola now. Just, just stand. Bring for me the person. I'm seeing like a sword coming on one of you now. Aside from this lady, there is, there is an anointing coming on one of you. Let me speak to that one person right now. I'm seeing a closed door. This is someone's destiny. It looks like I'm holding the air, but I'm seeing that I'm holding a padlock in the spirit. Whose destiny is that? Among these people standing, open, open, open. 
open now. I command that destiny open. Open now. Open now. Open now. Open now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You came alone. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry, I'll pray for the sick, sir. If I'm if I don't talk, are you alas, sir? No, don't don't come out until I ask you. This is witchcraft. You would have died since last year, June. Yes, sir. It's God that kept you. I will pray for you. I've seen your case already. If I don't pray for you, in three months, you will not be walking again. This is stroke. What is wrong with you? Yes, sir. All my body. This is what I'm saying. I'm seeing three months and you're on the bed not to rise again. We have to pray. This is witchcraft. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Come, my dear. This lady. I'm seeing a very beautiful lady in the physical in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing an old woman. Hold my hands. What fellowship. The exchangers of destiny. I hold the hands of this lady. And I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a restoration. A very beautiful girl in the physical. But I'm seeing the face of an old woman. Be free now. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of the Holy Ghost upon your life. I command that your destiny be restored. Your destiny be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ, for all of you standing here, my, my brother, this gentleman, come. What's your name? What do you do? What do you do? I'm a printer, sir. You are a what? Printer, printer. Nothing is working in your life. I need to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I break this embargo I see upon your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, this row, I'm seeing deliverance, chicken feather. That's what I'm seeing, chicken feather. This is an ordinance over a family, just this row. I stretch my hands now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Kabaroko to sobaria talikata, jakas kebarika to siyanapata. Let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let there be emancipation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Mama, I know that it's not time to pray, but I want to pray for you. Please come, madam. You came alone. Let her come. You came alone. I, I did my part and my heart has been here. So one of my son friend brought me here. When you are talking, everything you say is just about as if you are. Where, where did you together. come from? I come from uh, Samaru. From Samaru. Um, Basawa. No problem, Mama. Yes, I, I want to pray for you because of something I've Thank seen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say after me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The suffering. The suffering. The sorrow. The sorrow. In my life. In my life. Must end. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will eat. I will eat the fruit of my labor. The fruit of my labor. Father, by her confession, Amen. let her be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that captivity is over. I pray for all of you now. In the name of Jesus, my dear, don't be embarrassed. Eh? Be careful with men. Come. I'm seeing somebody really destroying your life. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? You are here. We love you. We don't condemn people, but. Be careful. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. The deception and the wickedness of evildoers. I pray for you now. Every captivity in our last family, whether male or female, as I stretch my hands over you, I command that it leaves you now. It leaves your family now. I say it again. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus. For the last time now, an anointing will come on you. It leaves you now. It leaves your family now. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands, everybody. Gentlemen, when it's time to pray for the sick, we'll pray for you. Huh? Just be patient. Please help him so that he doesn't strain himself. All of you lift your hands. One scripture and there is fire to deliver the oppressed now. Why are you here, my dear? You are with him. Oh, is your daddy? What? Okay. Since then, there is something that has been working on his body. Like you had an slave. accident. Yes, sir. 
Okay, and what happened? And since then, something has been working on his body, on his stomach, like snake. At times, the thing. Will Are you seeing what I'm saying? So it was never about accident. You see, accident was just the condition that made this happen. I saw three months stroke hitting this man and him not standing up from the bed again. But the Lord would destroy it. Eh? Just be patient. We want to pray now. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll pray. Exodus chapter 15. Quickly please. 6 to 11. Exodus 15. We're going to do a quick walk. We need to cast out wicked devils out of lives and families. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed into pieces the enemy. Next verse, to 11. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou sentest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood up right as an heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. To 11. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw up my sword, my hand shall destroy them. Next verse. Thou didst blow with thy wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty water. Who is like unto thee, O God, among the gods? Who is like unto thee? Glorious in holiness, comma, fearful in praises, doing, not delivering, doing wonders. That's what you are about to see now. Lift your hands. He said, I will pursue. I will overtake my lust. My desire will fall upon the people of God. I want to pray. Listen, deliverance is not just about falling down and rolling up and down. It's, it's, it's bringing the anointing of the spirit to bring a pattern, a separation. The Bible says the river separated Tita and Hitha. Separation to allow you move. I want to pray. Are you ready now? Remember that after they moved the seventh time, it was a shout, the healer. A shout, not just any shout, a shout that was sent like a word. And the Bible says the walls of Jericho fell down flat. That shout is what you are about to do. But let me issue a command in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, the one whom I serve and whose I am, in the name of Jesus, I declare over every force in the spirit, the covenants and the ordinances of darkness that have held the lives of God's people. As they shout this shout, wherever they are, I command those spirits. He said, when they hear my voice, they will run out of their hiding. I command not only an exposition, but a total separation. Are you ready to shout Jesus? At the count of three, one, two, three. In the name of Jesus, I command that fire to fall. Every power, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment, every enchantment. Go now, go now, go now. Every enchantment, Kaparakato Soto Preketelekata. Every enchantment, every enchantment, be free now. Hold on. Hallelujah. I usually don't do this until I'm directed. Hallelujah. I usually see pillars of fire standing by my left and right. I just want to pass through. You don't have to touch me. Except it is not God that has called this meeting. If there is a force and a spirit, it must be exposed as I pass you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I decree and declare right now, by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every power, every force, every power, every force, every power, every force, 
you must go now now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus as I pass you that anointing like fire is coming upon you to set you free be free now free now free now free now in the name of Jesus be free now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ In the name of Jesus Christ those of you outside lift your hands lift your hands I'm going to pass here right now the anointing of the Spirit is going to begin to come upon you are you ready now thank you Jesus you don't have to touch me just just allow me pass be careful be careful father in Jesus name let it be over now there is fire now that fire is moving all across now in the name of Jesus ordinances be broken now I'm seeing fire just around here where my hands are in the name of Jesus let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now be free now let it be over now 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 in the name of Jesus Christ be free now in the name of Jesus as I'm passing close to you and anointing is causing every power let them go the spirit of the lord is telling me to stand here right now in jesus name let there be deliverance now let there be deliverance now from every force of darkness every force of every force of darkness be free now i came here because i know that there are so many of you look the crowd in this place I want to pray for you i'm standing here my god look at the oppression that i see just standing here i'm about to pray right now and from the front to the back from the left to the right i want all of you to shout jesus something is leaving people already are you ready now your destiny must be open please don't take it for granted bring them out now at the count of three overflow three one two three be free now be free now in the name of Jesus I command my God please help them Jesus Christ look what is happening here from the front to the back right now anyone here under the siege of darkness be free now be free now help them be free now Lift your hands overflow three. I'm praying for you. Are you ready to shout Jesus again? There are many of you, you try to move forward, but the force keeps holding you. As you shout Jesus now, you're going to see something leave you. Are you ready? Father, all those who have been held captive, I declare that as they shout Jesus, let your fire of deliverance come upon them. One, two, three. I release you now. I release you now. I release you now go forward I release you now delay broken I release you now I release you now I release you now I release you now in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen I'm going to pray for everybody but the Lord is saying there are some of you here the call of God is upon your life but there are altars fighting you. I'm about to release you. Oh God, I'm seeing 17. One, seven. Where are they, oh God? Right now, to the back. Where are they? They have the call of God, but an altar of darkness tying down their lives. Mata soto kata. Be free now. hallelujah i'm going to pray for you look up please there are 11 of you the lord is saying it is you that you will use to help your family and the anointing that anointing of that joseph's anointing to distinguish you is coming on 11 people lord where are they to the back right to the back that anointing 
a destiny is rising no even if you are the last born i decree and declare let that anointing find you now let that anointing find you now the joseph anointing the joseph anointing that will cause you to save your brethren hallelujah please lift your hands overflow three it's not about falling down although there are several things happening here but i want you to just focus the last prayer i want to pray for you many of you will be surprised what happens to you listen i'm seeing keys like a key that was missing some of you were once you were destined for certain things and the devil veered off your life and as it is right now the treasure that god gave you you have lost it as i pray for you that restoration anointing is coming upon you some of you is anointings some of you is business connections lord where are they at the count of three let that fire come shout jesus at the count of three one two three receive that grace now restoration fire 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 Shake butter. Please open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. Great grace. New, season. New season. Mama, look at me. It's over. Over. Forever. Over. 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 He's going to use you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please everyone pray in the spirit. 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 Please pray in the spirit. Please pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Overflow one, pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Overflow one, I want to minister to you now. Listen, please, I want you to believe everything. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands, all of you. There are some of you here, as I'm looking, I'm just seeing chains. I want to pray at the count of three. I didn't come to waste your time. Right now, that chain is going to leave people now. Anyone here under the sound of my voice, and there is a chain of darkness, overflow one. I declare at the count of three right now, let that chain be broken. One, two. Three, I command that chain be broken now. Help them, please. Be broken now. To the back. Shakasko Pariata. Zato Kata. Be broken, broken. Fire is coming. I'm seeing fire moving across the crowd. In the name of Jesus Christ, I break every force, every yoke of darkness. Hallelujah. Are you pregnant? Come. I'm seeing an evil spirit. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go. By the anointing of the spirit. I release the destiny of this baby. You will not lose this baby. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help her. This lady praying in tongues. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace for dreams and visions the lord is releasing it upon you great for dreams and visions hallelujah now i'm going to walk across this crowd please i just want you to release your faith release your faith and receive something now as i walk through i'm seeing altars and they are living right now thank you jesus father let there be deliverance right now right now right now right now 
right now let that fire as i move oh god let the angel of your presence move let there be deliverance it is over that's what the lord says to you over now in the name of jesus christ over 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 shabas katai sheketis kalabra katoziata kata over now in the name of jesus over by the anointing of the holy ghost it is over please believe as i'm passing you don't don't worry the anointing of god will locate you over now in the name of jesus christ let it be over now now over your life let it be over i'm seeing fire moving here like this who is that fire for in jesus name i stretch my hands let there be deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now supernatural deliverance right now mama be free now in the name of jesus christ supernatural deliverance um i'm seeing a circle here and the lord is saying restoration of ministerial anointing a circle lord where are they there are people here at least four of you i stretch my hands let the anointing locate you the call for ministry the call for ministry the call Parakato Sedekatoshia. Enter. Enter that level. That's what I hear in the spirit. Enter. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. Enter that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who is? Is it victory or Victoria? I'm hearing a name it's like a victory or Victoria. Who is that? Please very quickly want to pray for the sick now. It's like you are wearing something like blue. Blue. Who is that person? What's your name, madam? Yes, sir. This is your first time here? No, sir. You've been coming. Madam, look at me. God is going to change your story. Completely. Amen. I don't know you, but yes. the Lord is saying he's bringing breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Hold my hands. Look at me. There is bad luck on your life, my dear. Good things come, but they never stay. And the Lord is saying to take it away right now. Be free. In the name of Jesus, I take away that spirit from your life. I set you free to move forward. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we go in. Who is Victoria? All the victories of Victoria be made free right now in Jesus' name. Can we go in from here? Please, everyone, open your mouth and begin to pray. Prophesy. Say, in the name of Jesus, I'm breaking forth spiritually in the name of jesus christ it's a new level for me it's a new level for me enter a new dimension enter a new dimension now in the name of jesus lift your hands i'm passing here now there is an anointing move move to the next level i'm prophesying to everybody standing here within the vicinity of this anointing step into a new dimension i release that grace now I release that grace now. I stretch my hands. Everything that has held you down, let it leave you now. In the name of Jesus. My God, look at this. Are you seeing? The legs are rotting completely. In the name of Jesus, be free now. I command be free now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me, my dear. Go home and write it. Good news comes for me in 12 days. Lord, lose their destinies. I'm standing here and I'm, there is an anointing. Let the destiny be open now. Open now. Shaba Sokos Kaliata. Embreketo Sasiketelikata. Jekros Kadabalako In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm standing here and I'm hearing I have called you accept my call accept my call accept my call accept my call my call is upon your life my call is upon your life stop fighting my call is upon your life that's what the Spirit of God is saying my call is upon your life accept my call my call is upon your life my mandate is upon your life my mandate is upon your life that's what God is speaking. My mandate is upon your life. You cannot fight it. It's an ordinance decided from heaven. My mandate is upon your life. 
light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle pastor lawrence speed come where is where is your wife to be come come two of you i see a grace for speed lift your hands enter that dimension now i release that grace speed to your life the lord is taking away delay go and mark it you are entering a strange level i see you climbing a ladder and the lord is saying it's time for your glory it's time for your glory light me lord light me lord light me lord collect that child quickly from kenny collect that child speed that grace collect that child in the name of jesus i'm seeing that grace a new dimension of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed coming upon your life a new level of speed hallelujah Jimmy, I'm seeing something for you. I'm seeing, please stand up. I'm seeing a bottle of oil and I'm seeing dollars. A bottle of oil and dollars. These two dimensions. The spirit and supernatural resources, that grace, the Lord is multiplying it. I'm seeing a bottle, a bottle of oil. A bottle of oil. The Lord is giving you a voice. Not only in the area of finances, but a strange demonstration of the spirit. Please be patient. We are going to pray for the sick, but tonight I, I perceive God is doing something strange. Young man, come. Come. You and this guy, two of you, come stand. Step into a new dimension. New dimension. In the name of Jesus, you will never be the same. This guy, just lift your hands where you are. Come. Enter a new level in the spirit. I release that grace now upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at people. And I'm seeing something rising from your stomach to your throat. And the Lord is saying, is the spirit of prophecy. Lord, I'm declaring right now. It's happening to people right now. It will come upon you like a mantle. Prophecy. 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 From your belly. From your belly. Prophecy. I command those rivers. Makato sakata rivers of living water rivers 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 in the name of jesus christ this lady come you come quickly there is a grace the call of god is upon your life enter that dimension of his grace may the lord give you visitations 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 I bring you out of the cage that I see you in. I bring you out of the cage. I bring you out of the cage. I see you inside a cage. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus, by fire, I bring you out. I bring you out. Ancestry will not fight you. I bring you out of the cage. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are soon going to pray for the sick. Where's, where's your wife? Where is she? The Lord is saying the powers will fight no more. Come. The powers will fight no more. 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 There are ordinances fighting this family. I see it in the spirit. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, victory is established. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. The powers will fight no more. In the name of Jesus, I need to step into a new level of the prophetic that has always been there. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Shalabarakatos. This usher lady, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will begin to see things before they happen. That's what the Lord is saying, I should tell you. God is putting something in your eyes. You will see things. Shata Sotosha. Mari Katos Kobaria Kata. You will see things before they happen. In the name of Jesus, with precision, with precision, and with accuracy, with precision, with precision, with precision, and with accuracy. Where are these people that just married? This lady welfare. Where is she now? You and your wife. Where are they? She's not around. Stand up. Let me pray for you on her behalf. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying for your mother. Let the Lord perfect her. But I'm praying for you. Something wants to take finances off your life. If I don't pray for you, I see great suffering in the days coming. It's like finance just dries up to the point that even your basic needs you cannot meet. But I cancel it right now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. This fair lady, an angel is pouring oil on your head. That's what I'm seeing right now. An angel is pouring oil on your head. Breakthrough, step into a new dimension. Step into a new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. A new level. A new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wato. Where is she? Is she here? I'm seeing a flag being raised up. And the Lord is saying it's a new season. I'm seeing a flag being raised up in the spirit. The Lord is announcing you. I'm declaring, let that anointing come upon you. A new season. Let that flag be raised. In the name of Jesus, let that flag be raised. You will never, never be down. Let that flag be raised. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to pray for the sick. Let's just flow. God... You know, sometimes this is this lady, you come. Yes. Say for my shame. Say it for my shame. I receive double. The Lord is taking me to a new level and I receive it. I lay my hands upon you in the name of Jesus. The grace for a new level is released upon you right now. I command it so, I declare it so. In Jesus' name I pray. This gentleman, you, come. Confusion ends now in your life. I lay my hands upon you. I command confusion to end right now from your life. In the name of Jesus. Confusion ends now over your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Confusion ends over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing, I will, I will prophesy generally, but I'm seeing a family having the breakthrough of a new car and an anointing. I'm, 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 it may not look like it's necessary for you, but I'm seeing an anointing locating that family now. This is, this is a, a blessing of a car. You will stand and testify. I don't care whether the resources are there or not. I stretch my hands. Let that anointing make it happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let that anointing by the Spirit make it happen right now. Help that person please. Let that anointing make it happen right now. In the name of Jesus. Make it happen. Cameraman, come. I want to pray for you. Look at me. It will surprise you the kind of favor you will start walking in. Amen. You believe what I'm saying? Lift your hands. Father, let this brother drink of the grace for favor. A fresh dimension. A fresh dimension. A fresh dimension of favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady, you, come. The Lord is saying, I'm rolling away reproach from your life. Everything that looks like reproach, I lay my hands upon you. I'm literally feeling like there are holes on your head and the anointing is going through. I command reproach. Go and never return from her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to pray for the sick. Please, we're going to be very fast. 
we are going to be very fast listen to me if you have any cancer related issue or barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i will want to pray for you by myself otherwise overflow one um, i'm in the main auditorium i want you to come out over all the overflows just come to the front stand up stand up come to the front of your projector stands quickly please come to the front of your projector stands for god's sake not to embarrass you but look at this woman's leg look at this look at this doctor look at this is this sickness look at how the whole leg is rotting already please quickly you're sick in your body come quickly stand if the people cannot move just keep them where they are or bring them close so that you don't um are we together now we're going to pray it will be very fast because our time is gone we want to finish on time the devil is a wicked person for these kinds of oppression are we together there are so many people in overflow tree and uh, god will grant grace pastor lawrence come you will join them today when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you hallelujah father in the name of jesus by the corporate anointing we pray these people have come expecting to be healed expecting to be touched i pray that your anointing will visit them right now in the name of jesus overflow one overflow two overflow three let there be a release of the corporate grace right now in the name of jesus christ we're free now in the name of jesus christ what's wrong with you my dear Huh? fracture where how long where is the leg it can't move and your hand don't worry it's okay and your legs lord jesus please walk help this lady miracle, in the name of jesus walk my miracle here i release today. that anointing upon you right walk now my i correct your jesus. body now hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah Please stretch your hands here and begin to pray in the spirit. If they are still praying for you outside, just, just continue. Please, if your request is yet to come here, you can quickly wave it, wave it, and let the ushers have it and bring it here quickly. Stretch your hands, stretch your hands. By faith, believing that God will visit you. Don't, don't stretch your hands out of unbelief. If there are requests here to come, please let them come here quickly. Please bring them quickly. Shabakato soprakato baladabash. Unto you that answers prayers, O God, shall all flesh come. Rakato sodo brendege barakato shabradiski labaria. Endakato sata prakato jalabaria kato brendege degodos. Please pray. You are praying in the spirit. You are connecting. Lord, we are believing that we will not have to write this again. Be serious about it. Make sure you are connecting by faith. Shakato kaparakato barikata sipriada balarabash. Shakata parakata paroto subriash. Lord, arise in majesty. Arise in your power. Visit the case of people. Change impossible situations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shata prakato barakato barikate kate. Shalekate prandakata barakatosh. Eketo kaparokata bariata ba. Lord, let this be the last time they will write this in the name of Jesus Christ. Let this be the last time they will write this in the name of Jesus. Let this be the last time. Shabakata pakata 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 pakata. Ende keto rakato shada pragada baladaba. Lord, we believe in you. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Arise, O God of heaven. Visit your people. Arise, O God of heaven, visit your people. Shabakata Parada Baroto Soto Predegate. 
Legataka to prande kate presha de bene de bosh. Hallelujah. 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 Please respond with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, this is not a ritual. I stand on behalf of your people. Lord, these requests represent different dimensions of demonic Jerichos standing between them and the place of destiny. Father, as I step upon this, let this be symbolic of the ark going around Jericho. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, you're going to shout Jesus, we're going to shout Jesus seven times. Are we together? As a prophetic act over this, I'm going to guide you and you will shout it. For every one shout, let it represent one day going around Jericho. That at the seventh time we are agreeing together that no matter what the issue is, if you don't believe, you will never, never see the salvation of God. But for believers, you'll be surprised. Father, that you hearken to this prophetic act. I know God, I stand leading your people as we shout that name. The name of our high priest who has been exalted above the Aaronic priesthood, above any kind of priesthood. Are you ready now? I will call the number and you shout Jesus. Are you ready? Number one. Number two. Crumbling every mountain. Number three. Shabakoto Sopataya. Makrotoba, I tell you, I feel the fire of God as we are shouting this Jesus. Number four. Jesus. Number five. Jesus. Number six. Jesus. I put an anointing on this seven shout. Let this be the shout that crumbles every mountain. In the name of Jesus, number seven. Jesus. I decree and declare unto you, prepare for strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you, even before you get to your homes or where you came from, you will meet it waiting for you like a messenger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. Let's take the prophecy and then we'll round off. Every shame and reproach that has lingered in your life shame and reproach some of you is a pattern across your family members in the name of Jesus Christ I command shame and reproach be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever be rolled over your life forever hallelujah I release over your life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life supernatural grace for speed in life hallelujah I decree and declare that every garment he saw Joshua the high priest and he said to remove that garment every garment you are wearing that is attracting bad luck attracting all kinds of things the Bible says to give them a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness I tear off that garment from your life I tear off that garment from your life garment of reproach I tear it off from your life I tear it off from your life in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare divine direction Lord what do I do where do I go to tonight 
by dreams and visions and strange encounters i provoke divine direction to come to your direction in the name of jesus christ master we have toiled all night but i prophesy to you go back this time around to the same place you failed i anoint you go and succeed i anoint you go and succeed i anoint you go and surpass the ordinary in the name of jesus christ every door that has refused to open your parents tried it refused to open the bible says lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted O ye not doors ancient doors i come against every ancient door and every gate swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus swing open now in the name of jesus every helper that must arise tonight not tomorrow tonight every helper ordained by god to rise up and come to your aid i provoke favor towards you from them i provoke favor towards you from them i provoke favor towards you from them listen whoever has what it takes to help you in the name of jesus i direct their eyes to you i say it again whoever has what it takes to help you i direct their hearts to you the same mystery that bound jonathan and david i declare wherever your helper is let it be as it were for jonathan and david in the name of jesus christ all those in ministry here i prophesy to you a strange unction upon the work on your hands step into a new direction step into a new dimension in the name of jesus christ every family here that has cried that's all you've known to do cry and cry and say when will god deliver us i declare that your weeping has endured enough i prophesy your morning comes and with it joy in the name of jesus christ those writing exams let the mercy of god the mercy that helped those who went before you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you may that same mercy speak for you hallelujah there are people here you are sensing that your spiritual life is dry it's not like you don't love god but revelations they don't come as they used to come again sometimes you open your bible you cannot even read to pray you are sensing something is wrong it's like you know your spiritual life is under attack in the name of jesus christ i launch you to the new a new insight a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter a new dimension of encounter the lord will open your eyes to not only listen to teachings but to get the spirit of the message there are some of us the devil has cheated us by allowing our prayer altar go down in the name of jesus tonight let fire from heaven fall upon your prayer life let the quickening of the spirit fall upon your prayer life every wrong friend in your life whether you want them to go or not in the name of jesus for the sake of god's hand upon your life i separate you with them forever this night i separate you with them forever time wasters destiny wasters i cause a separation between you and them forever we're rounding up some of us here are plagued with the spirit of laziness spiritual laziness mental laziness physical laziness the bible says a lazy hand a slothful hand will 
that a one that deals with a slothful hand will beg he will become poor i decree and declare the spirit of productive diligence not just diligence the spirit of productive diligence i release it upon you right now are you ready to receive favor i will continue to pray favor upon your life until it works i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ even if you have seen favor in your life by the grace of god i release you to a new order of favor a new order of favor a new order of favor favor is not when you have money favor is when men arise by god to meet your needs if you have money and men don't come to your life you are not favored you are only prosperous you are not favored favor is when men arise that before you call they come they don't come and go they come and stay until the purposes of god have been achieved i call them now from the east the west the north and the south help us of your destiny may they appear before you in the name of jesus christ i don't know what personal request you desire from god but i release my faith with you and i declare that by miracle service may you will only return rejoicing over that issue in the name of jesus christ anyone here trusting god for a good job not just a job that you look like a slave a job with honor in the name of jesus i agree with you between now and next miracle service may god bless you with a job that will launch you to a new dimension everyone in business here the god factor the favor factor the help factor the ebenezer factor i release it upon your business i release it upon your field of endeavor in the name of jesus christ the Bible says, where thou hast been rejected so that no man will pass through you. It says, I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. I decree and declare, may your gates be continually open. Yeah. Now, I want to pray a prayer that may be very strange for some of us. I want to pray that somebody will give you money. Yeah. Listen. Hold on, listen. We are not money mongers. This is not some carnal thing. There are some of you, this is what you need. You don't need advice. You don't need counseling. You just need help. Straight help. I pray for you. You will be surprised. It will look like a dream. I pray for you. Not a helper, not access. Thank God for it. But a helper that will come with the financial resource. To help you i stretch my hands and i release it upon you in the name of jesus christ the anointing for miracles help that guy the anointing for signs the anointing for wonders whether you are called in ministry or not in the name of jesus may you carry it in your spirit from today begin to reproduce a new order of signs and wonders and finally i pray for you whatever needs to be done for your family members to rejoice in the lord between now and the next 30 days whatever needs to be shaken whatever needs to be overturned in the name of jesus christ joy for your family members joy to your family members in the name of jesus christ let it be so in the name of jesus christ and for every for every worker here in the name of jesus christ after tonight rise 
with a new level of evidence become a testament not just a testament of a believer in Christ but a testament that you belong to this spiritual family the grace to prove it let it be released upon you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline